Are you ready to transform your child's play area into the perfect learning experience and set them up for success? Well, ideally that's how this video probably should have started, except let's take a look behind me. Yeah, I've kind of let things go the last couple of months. I've pretty much failed to keep my child's shelves looking like the typical Montessori shelf setups we see plastered all over social media. But this is the reason why I'm making the video with the room in its current state. I just want you to know that while ideally we should strive to keep our child's room picture perfect like all the pictures and videos we see online, it's not easy to maintain and we shouldn't look down on ourselves if things get a bit out of hand. As a parent, I completely understand that schedules get busy especially on holiday season. And for me, I wish I could blame it on the holiday season, but ever since my daughter was born, it's been tough to set up this play area to accommodate both my children. Make sure to watch to the end for three bonus tips on how to set up your play area for two different age children. It's important to remember that Montessori is about letting kids learn and explore at their own pace. So it's okay if your play area looks a little different from someone else's. The key is to create an environment that is safe, nurturing, and allows for plenty of hands-on learning and play. With that said, let's see if I can go ahead and do something about the play area as it's been bothering me that things have been a bit cluttered. I know it's easy to fall into thinking that let me just add one more toy as my child loves playing with everything else, but we really should limit to about 8 activities. This helps children focus on one thing at a time and really engage with the materials. Alright, so let me walk you through my thought process on when I do do toy rotations and when I try to do some decluttering. This section here is my son's area as I do have two areas and this other side is a little bit more focused for my daughter which I'll talk about a little bit later. Alright, so here we go. Let's go ahead and first thing first. Let's go ahead and do some decluttering and remove stuff that I know my son isn't really interested in or has been playing with as much. First, like this top section area is kind of like what I was talking about, like just throwing stuff on there that I know my son really enjoy or his new items that I just haven't had the chance to go ahead and, you know, do a proper toy rotation. I've just added it on top and some of them has just kind of stuck there. It's not really a good look when it's that much stuff up there. Like for some, this Jenga type puzzle that we got from Ikea, um, as you can see, it says 2021. So it's been sitting there for a little while. My son really doesn't play with it. So let's go ahead and set that aside and that's going to get rotated out. Here is a sleeping bag. Um, I usually leave it up here as it was convenient for him to grab it. Um, however, he's slowly starting to forego that afternoon nap. Um, let's go ahead and remove it as he actually doesn't really nap in his room anymore either. He likes prefer napping in our upstairs play area. Let's go ahead and move that aside. Okay. Next, um, Kleenex, got to keep that because you always need that. This tray here is always good for um, if they want to play with anything, they can always move it down. And if he wants to build something with these magnet tiles here, he has a steady base. So I will go ahead and keep that up here. But I will remove this Yodo player actually, they brought it in to listen to music. Usually we leave this outside and they just kind of bring it around with them. This is the Yodo Mini um, and if you haven't seen it, I actually released a video about it um, or at least I should have by now released a video about it. Um, I actually don't really like this case so probably going to get a replacement one or something. The reason why I don't like it is because when you have cards on top of here, um, it activates the button. It's constantly pressing on it. So I think that's probably the reason why battery runs out but eh, it's actually still pretty good for being left in there like that. But let's go ahead and move this out for now. And next item is this little basket here. This stuff is actually mostly my daughter's stuff besides for this. It's a nice little love every toy my son likes playing with. And for now, let's go ahead and move this out because I don't see this as an important thing. So here we have this tool set. Um, I think it, does it fit? Yeah, I think the reason why I left it up there is because it doesn't fit in any of these little sections I have here. I might have to remove a section and I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. But for now, let's just leave it up here. And similar to that tray, this mat here, it's just a rollable, you know, kind of towel you have for the floor towel you have in your bathroom. It's just an area that your child can just focus on their activities. So I'll go ahead and keep this here as my son does use that. So already the top area looks a lot better even if I do decide to keep this here. I haven't decided 100% yet, but we'll see. So these puzzles here from Love Every, um, my son has pretty much mastered it and hasn't played with it as much anymore. So this is another item that we can go in and 
rotate out. Oh, and as you can see, we've pushed some musical instruments all the way to the back, which I think, oh, sorry about that. So yeah, there's some random stuff in here that does need to be cleared out. So I do want to keep the musical instruments, but let me go ahead and clean out this, some of this stuff real quick. All right, so I actually did end up using the other basket I had earlier. It just makes it a little bit easier to see what's in here. I know it's a little bit overloaded with musical instruments. However, these are in the same kind of area. And a lot of times now, my son and daughter both play. So this gives them both instruments to play with. Okay. So next, um, let's go down here. See, I do have two another, oh, once again, two items stacked back to back. These emotional dolls. Little things are very, very important. Uh, my son really liked playing with them in the beginning. He has kind of mastered this little already and he has been ignoring them. So let's go ahead and put this away. I want to say he hasn't been playing with this either hammer and thing, um, hammer set from Love Every. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that out too, which leaves me perfectly good because this has two activities here and he is in the middle of counting. So this is also, once again, Love Every item. <laughs> Um, that's where a lot of items are. It's another counting thing that Love Every has. Just kind of put them on here to help them practice counting. I will be making a video about reviewing this play kit later. For now, let's go and leave this in this spot. And it's kind of nice that that actually is um, inside that bag because it kind of entices my daughter or at least doesn't attract my daughter to mess with some of the items in there and she won't lose it or something while my son is at school. All right, so this is another counting set here that my son has been enjoying. It's just kind of putting little pegs here to make the different numbers. I'm sorry about all the racket, but this is what happens when it bounces. He has been enjoying playing with this. Let's go ahead and just leave this here for now and move it a little bit more to the forefront instead of all the way in the back, including all these cards here. Okay, next. So we have this two stuff here. Um, I want to say my daughter plays with this a lot more than my son. I mean, he likes vehicles, but this isn't one that he really cares for much. I could probably put this away. This here though, yeah, it's always been one of my headaches. My son is really, really into cars. And this basket here, probably have to do a little bit more rearranging and remove some of them and just leave a couple of cars. Um, usually we don't buy him these, but we were in Disneyland and he really liked it. And he actually hasn't been playing with it much as much. So you know what? Let's go ahead and rotate this out. I'll keep this here for now. And I'll think about what vehicles to leave in here for him. So once last item on here is going to be this Cubix. Well, actually, I skipped this Magnetiles, which I talked about earlier. It's actually really nice. These are the mini ones. They're really cool. So yeah, and they're like smaller, much smaller than the regular Magnetiles. And my son loves them. Um, I keep a little idea book for him. He likes kind of copying stuff sometimes, but most of the time he makes his own stuff. All right, so back to this. Once again, this is actually made from the same company as uh, Magnetiles, but they're basically cubes. It's another for more creativity outlet for my son to play with. And this is something he likes playing with. So I'm going to go and keep it here as well. All right, so here is the new decluttered version. Much more appealing and easier for my son to focus on any of the activities while he's in the room here. And there are now only seven activities versus before. I actually have no idea. I lost count. But there's way more than the suggested um, eight activities. We keep getting new books from my son and um, our grandparents will get new books and we just kind of throw them on. And we haven't had a chance to remove some of the books. Um, some of the books that they haven't been reading as often and they don't use as often. So let's go ahead and remove some of them real quick. So now it's just one book just one book so you can easily see all the face of the books um, and everything and I kind of kept it where the bottom more books are a little bit more friendly for my daughter which actually reminds me I should probably switch this one up here the Captain Shelby one up here reason being is that all the ones down here are actually board books so less chance of my daughter messing up the books as she's a little bit more rough on them and the top ones while they are hardcover the inside of these pages are pretty much just um regular pages it's a little bit thicker than like a sheet of paper but not much but yes as you can see just removing a little couple books and rearranging a little bit looks much more appealing All right now this is gonna be a tough one because first off, she's actually really good with this puzzle already. So let's go ahead and remove it. 
she's been enjoying these cups um, not only during um, bath time but we actually have multiple sets we have one of bath but she's starting to stack them um, but this might be too many actually for her let's go ahead and just keep one set for now um yeah these are the target versions so if you buy them in target you get this all of it however when you purchase them from love every they're actually two separate sets originally and they just made all together which is a great deal i really like these a lot but yeah let's go ahead and just keep this set for now to keep this video from being overly long i'm gonna go ahead and skip me talking about why each one of these items my daughter is no longer interested in let's just go ahead and move on to see the finished results so this is how my daughter's play area now looks it's um, quite a bit different than earlier. I know I rotate a lot out and usually don't rotate out that many items, but it has been a very long time since I've done this. And I did keep these, which are very um, something that she's familiar with, as well as I have these actually that she was playing from upstairs, play area. So I moved them down here now. And I like to keep the stuff down here a little bit more skill-based and the stuff upstairs for more imagination play. By no means would I consider my playroom or play area picture perfect. However, I do think that it's set up nicely so that my children can focus on the items and it's not cluttered at all. Setting up a Montessori play area for two children of different ages can be a bit of a balancing act, but it's definitely doable. Here are a few tips that I've learned. Create separate areas. One way to ensure that each child has age-appropriate material is to set up separate areas for each child. This might mean having one corner of the room for a younger child and another corner for the older child. This way, you can tailor the materials in each area to specific needs and interests of each child. Mix and match. Another option is to mix and match materials that are age appropriate for children. For example, you might have a shelf of puzzles and blocks that are suitable for both kids, but also have a separate basket of toys that are specifically geared towards each child's age and abilities. Encourage shared play. While it's important to give each child the space and materials they need to learn and grow, it's also a good idea to encourage shared play. This can help siblings bond and learn from each other and also gives the older child the opportunity to act as a mentor or role model, which mimics many Montessori classroom setups. Overall, the key is to create an environment that is safe, nurturing, and allows for plenty of hands-on learning and play. With a little bit of planning and some creativity, you can set up a Montessori play area that works for both of your children. Hopefully I do a better job of keeping this play area from being so cluttered and practice toy rotations a bit more regularly now. If you want to learn more about toy rotations, check out this video over here. And just remember, you don't always have to feel down on ourselves just because we don't live up to social media standards. Every family has their own story, so it's okay to write yours differently. And I'll see you in the next video.